Today we're working on a 2008 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, we did a head unit install for the customer a little while ago and uh, the reason why we were doing a head unit replacement is that the, the customer figured that that was going to fix the issue of him not having audio on seven out of the eight speakers in his vehicle. Uh, and despite our best efforts to advise him that that wasn't actually the problem, he insisted so we went ahead and did the job anyways. Uh, as we knew it was going to happen, uh, he left with the exact same functioning speakers that he came in with. And uh, of course, now we get to try and find the solution to the problem. Well, anyone that's ever worked on one of these vehicles before knows that the factory amplifier location is uh, susceptible to water damage. And uh, we're assuming that that's what happened with this vehicle here too. So. Uh, we're going to disassemble the back half of the vehicle here. We're going to expose the factory amplifier and have a look and uh, Determine that we were right all along. So let's have a look at it So I kind of want to say that maybe this customer has already tried to look at this situation uh, as you can see the Left quarter panel has been exposed a little bit uh, This bottom trim is gone, but I don't see it in the vehicle here. So maybe it was never here and the top trim panel is also missing there too. So uh, I don't know if he tried to remedy this himself or what, but uh, we're going to clean out the back of his vehicle here and we're gonna expose, expose the factory amplifier location and have a look. All right, so after a little bit of convincing, uh, we had to actually take the back seat out. All right, this is actually the third row of seating, I guess. So one, two, three, four, 18 mil bolts. And then the back seat or third row seating just pulls right out, super easy. Which then gives us the ability to move this panel out of the way, which of course exposes the culprit right there. So that is the factory amp. I'm going to disconnect it. I've already taken the 310 mil bolts out that hold it in place. So I'm gonna disconnect it and make our harness a little bit more accessible. So while I've got you in here, I'll kind of explain what I think is happening to these amplifiers. That's about where it's situated. Uh, if it were actually mounted in place, it's not right now. But what I believe is happening is, is there's actually water getting on this harness and it is trickling down straight into the amplifier. And if we were to open this amplifier up, which I think we might do, uh, I think we would see a lot of corrosion, which is obviously making the amplifier not operate properly. So let's finish pulling this out and we'll see if we can't find some corrosion inside. So much to my surprise, I was at, once I got the amplifier out and disassembled and out of its aluminum case, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised that I don't see any uh, signs of corrosion. Uh, this is the top of the amplifier right here. This is where the, the plugs go in. And I was expecting to see some corrosion down here on these mounting points, but uh, I'm not seeing any, which is strange. Even the pins inside, uh, they're all clean. So I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing a bunch of corrosion on here. In either case, this amplifier is toast and we need to figure out a solution to get around it. So that's our next step. Okay, so here we are, we've got our six channels coming from our factory amplifier, we've now converted that into Stinger 9 wire uh, that we need to run up to the deck location. And we'll clean up this harness a little bit, make it look the way that it's supposed to look, and get this back panel all put back together. All right, so we've got the rear quarter panel all reassembled. Uh, the harness has been ran to the front of the vehicle. Uh, I just gotta throw the back, or third row seating back in. And we're all done back here. Let's go check out what's going on up front. All right, so here we are up in the front and we've got audio everywhere that we expected to get audio, which is great. Uh, we were also able to get this customer's uh, steering wheel controls working when everyone else in town said that they couldn't do it. So as you can see, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm controlling it on the steering wheel. So the 2008 Commander, actually there's a, a couple of years, actually I think it's every Commander. Uh, the steering wheel controls, you can't just use your standard, uh, like an RP4 CHY4, you have to use a CAN bus module in between, uh, as well as using a standalone steering wheel control module. So behind the radio here, we've actually got three different modules, which is super annoying. Uh, but it worked and uh, we got it all in there and everything fits. There's actually lots of room back there, so that's all good. But uh, yeah, so we've got steering wheel controls when we didn't think we were going to, and we have 
all six speaker locations working as we would expect it to. Hopefully I wasn't picking up enough volume there where I might get a copyright strike against me, but uh, that was some Sabbath anyways. Anyway, so that's it for this job. We get to wrap this up and send this down the road and uh, we're all good. Everything is all good here.